ahead and make a demonstration of how to render lists in HTML as a navigation menu. Um, so first of all, let's, um, let's create some HTML and something really basic. I can spell correctly. So we'll just do a hello world, make sure we can read our document correctly. So here we have the HTML. All right, so a lot of times um, you want to be semantically accurate and render um, things on the page and name them for what they really are. So in this case, we're going to create a navigation bar. So we use the nav tag. Uh, then we want a list of things. So we'll use a list, an unordered list. And lists have list items. So you use li. And then inside of that, you want it to be a list of uh, anchor tags or links. And uh, we'll just use the pound sign as a placeholder URL. And um, so our menu, uh, we'll just pretend we have a site with a few pages here. We'll call it a home page. And uh, maybe we have an about us page and a contact page. You can have more or less items, but uh, that's pretty much it. So when we say that we're creating semantic HTML, what we're doing is we're making sure that the tags are naming the actual content. We could have done something different. It didn't have to be semantic. We, back in the olden days, we used to see people use span tags for everything, span for inline items. So you could have a span tag that is the nav. Maybe you had a class calling it navigation. So what I just rendered here from the browser's point of view is exactly the same as what I rendered up here. Remember in HTML, everything is a box. Um, the only reason things look different when you use different tags is because the browser has a default um, CSS built into the browser and the browser makes the determination of what the tags look like. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this in the menu or in the page and see what, it, see what it looks like. So here the browser has decided that when you use um, an unordered list with list items and links, it's going to render it as um, <clears throat> bullet points and your boxes, everything is a box, are going to be stacked one on top of the other. And here with the span tag, it says, well, span tags aren't anything special, so we're going to render them as boxes, but they're going to flow side to side. Um, they're not going to have underlying styles. They're not going to have bullet points. But at the end of the day, you can override those styles and make them look uh, however you want them to look. If you do the inspection on a browser, right, and you, you can click on any item, you can see the default style that's in, they call it the user agent style sheet. So you here you can see a list item. They've decided to display it as um, list item and the text align, um, uh, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's a browser specific style. Um, and then, yeah, here are the unordered list, the list style type is, it, it wants to use a disk, which is its way of saying bullet point but we can override the style in the CSS. So anyway, what we want to do is we prefer semantically accurate. So it really is a list of anchor links. It's not a span of span tags. So the reason we like semantically accurate HTML is it's good for the search engines, but it's also good for accessibility. Imagine if you're a blind user and you have a screen reader. It The screen reader will tell you that you're looking at a navigation element that has a list that contains list items of anchor tags. If you did the span tag approach, your screen reader would say, you know, you have a span of span of span, and that's not helpful to our blind users. What's also cool though, is you can remain semantically accurate and make it look however you want. So it's still accessible to the blind user, but it looks cool for the, the um, people who can see. Um, so let's, let's make this look like a proper navigation menu. Um, 
So I, the, ideally, once you've completed the HTML and it's semantically accurate, you shouldn't have to touch this file ever again. You now have a hierarchical representation of the content. So we can then move over to the CSS. Now there's a thousand different ways to approach this in the CSS. What I like to do is um, design this hierarchically. Uh, if any of you have ever used SAS or LESS, um, it can it does the nested CSS approach where it ultimately renders upon transpiling a hierarchical uh, CSX structure. So what that means is we can start start with you know a body tag body selector, and uh, just to show that it works, we'll just say background uh, color is uh, we'll make it something really ugly. We'll refresh that. So here you see the style didn't take place, and you probably know why. I need to link to the style sheet. So we'll go ahead and ha add a, a link tag here. So the key here is to um, test it one piece at a time. Don't write a bunch of code and then and then test it because you won't know which thing broke it. You want to test one thing at a time. So here I've just tested the background it's sort of a hello world of the CSS to make sure that this HTML can actually find the CSS document and that this style is actually applying to the HTML. So <clears throat> that's not such a bad color, so I'll go ahead and leave that. Um, so let's go to the next element. So now we want to find the navigation bar. So we could just go nav, um, but imagine the page had many different navs. So I like to do a hierarchical approach, body, nav. Let's make it a Rebecca purple. I've never seen that color, so let's use that one. We'll refresh it. Cool. So already this doesn't look like a good nav because I see all this extra spacing. So um, I'd, what I'd like to do is have a nice little bar that goes all the way across the top of the screen. So let's find out why... Um, why that space is there. I have a hunch it, it's the body has a, a margin. We didn't use a, C, a, re, a reset CSS. So, um, but we can know for sure if we hit, uh, we'll hit F12 and we'll inspect the items. Here you see the UL item has a margin of 16. So we would want to reset the UL's margin. Here the nav has no margin. The body has a margin of 8. That's where that's coming from. So here you see, if you go on the computed tab, remember if you hit F12 inside the browser, you can inspect the elements on your page and find out what the browser's default styles are. So here we've got a margin of 8, and we want to get rid of that. So let's go into our CSS, go to that body tag, and reset the margin. Refresh. Now we have a nice header bar, and this purple bar is the nav bar, so it's semantically accurate. Um, so we'll inspect that nav bar. We see that the margin, the border, and the padding are all zero, <clears throat> and that's what we want. Now we would rather the nav bar be slim, and we'd rather the text be horizontal. So let's let's address that next. So let's look at this list and see what it's got. So here we've got this unordered list. It's kind of got a hanging margin at the bottom, 16 on the top and the bottom, uh, and it's got a padding of 40. Well, let's get rid of that, that padding, and, and also let's get rid of those, um, those, those disks. So we'll go inside of here. Again, I'm going to do this hierarchically, body, nav, ul. <clears throat> we'll say margin is 0 and padding is 0. List style type is disk. We're going to change that to none or whatever the default is. So we're going to refresh the page. And now I have these nice simple boxes. Now the list items are actually just boxes stacked on one on top of the other. You'll notice that they render very similar to how div tags render. So we can then, if we want them not, so by default, a div tag is a display block. And when you, uh, let's see if we can see that computed style as display, but 
Well, here we actually have display list item. One thing that's nice here, you can see the hierarchy, the body, the nav, the UL, the LI. So we'd like to change list item. So I'm back into my CSS and we'll go body, nav, UL, LI. <clears throat> I'll get rid of that typo there. So we could change it to inline. Um, let's try it inline and see what it does. So now it just renders like regular text that flows. So, it's, so if you mouse over the, the item, you can see it flows. Well, the problem with inline is that um, it's what we really want is display inline block because we want these menu items to be like squares. So let's change that to display inline block. That allows us to set the padding and the margin on each of these items. So it doesn't look much different, but now we can go to the list item and we can um, we can set uh, you know if I wanted to set the margin um, let's we'll just say three pixels so each block has a margin remember everything is a box and when everything is a box it has a margin a border a padding and then it's height and width um, I don't want to set the margin there because I really want to set it on the anchor tag so I'm going to add an item here for the anchor and I don't want the anchor tag to be inline block I want it actually actually to be a block because it's the single menu item um, and let's see let's go ahead and make the font the font color Red and uh, all right, but because it's a menu item, we don't want to see these underline links. So by default, the browser underlines all the links. So let's get rid of that underline. So we'll go text decoration none. And remember, test one attribute at a time. Otherwise, you won't know what changed. All right, so so now we want some padding. Let's make it so when we mouse over each of these anchor leak items, it hovers or, or it changes colors. So we have the pseudo classes hover, and we'll change the. Uh, Let's make the background pink when you hover over it. So now you have this nice mouse over effect. It's starting to feel like a real menu. Let's give it um, let's give it some padding. We'll say five pixels. Now it, now it looks like a real menu. Now let's say we want the menu to align uh, over on the uh, left side or the right side left right it's all the same um, so maybe the ul element will do a text align right there's actually many ways you can achieve this right you can maybe you just you do an alignment and and uh, you could use positioning you can use float um, each has its benefits so now you have a menu at the top of your page that's nice and tidy it's, you've got the menu background, you've got menu links, home, about, as a contact. And with very little CSS, we've basically overridden the default behavior of the browser. And, uh, and we could set it to whatever style we want. Um, what's cool about this is, imagine you wanted to render this on a mobile device, and instead of having it as a menu over the side, maybe you wanted it somehow to be collapsed instead of a hamburger menu. You can still keep that semantically accurate navigation, but for different devices, render it differently with different CSS. So what you've done there is you've decoupled the look and the feel of the page from the structure of the page, and that's key here.
in the really olden days, we used to have to use tags like font and, and the color was baked into the HTML and that tightly coupled the way that the, the page looked from the way that the page um, was structured. So we want to start by structuring the page, make it semantically accurate to represent the content, and then we use the style sheet to style the content.